Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use a PDF viewer to mark up a document as you are reading it. Any PDF viewer will work for this. I've used several, but I'm going to recommend that you get the full version of Adobe Reader. This is available to you for free as a student at the University of Utah. Let's quickly cover that for a moment before we move further. I have done a Google search right here, University of Utah Office of Software Licensing. The first link that comes up after doing that search is the Office of Software Licensing. We can click on that and we will notice that as students, you get a full version of Adobe's Creative Cloud. Uh, you also get the full Microsoft Office suite, including Excel and Word. And even if you don't like to use those very often, I would say they're worth downloading on your computer because sometimes you kind of have to use them. There are a range of products that come with Adobe beyond the reader. If you have an interest in video editing or animation, you have access to the full Creative Cloud. This this is the sort of thing that costs like $600 a year to subscribe to. As a student, you get it for free. I would recommend you get the full version of at least the Adobe Reader, even if you want nothing to do with video editing. Uh, get the Adobe Reader because it has tools that other PDF viewers do not have. Uh, let's bring it up on screen right here. So and there's a list of tools that you can use to edit PDFs, uh, possibly to uh, combine PDFs together, to get rid of certain pages in PDFs if you don't want them there. Uh, there's a range of things you can do with the full Adobe suite that you cannot do with the free version and that most other PDF viewers do not allow for. Uh, it, Adobe also has really good text recognition software. So if you have a photo and it's got language on it that the computer's not recognizing as language, Adobe Reader will often and like scan that and recognize it. And so you'll be able to, you know, search for certain words or highlight certain words. Uh, so yeah, I'd strongly recommend getting the full version of Adobe. Uh, let's talk about uh, the more relevant thing that I want to talk about in this video, which is how to highlight things in a PDF viewer. Let me make a case briefly about why you would want to do this. 20 odd years ago, when I started going to college, I had a professor tell me that if I was reading something for academic purposes and I didn't have a pen in my hand, then I was wasting my time. And I remember being a young student and thinking that that this was sort of an exaggeration. I felt like the professor was sort of like overplaying his his hand in saying this. Um, after 20 years in academia, I find that the professor was largely right. You should be actively notating stuff as you read it. Now, the thing is, we usually don't have a pen in our hand these days because almost everything is on screens. So this is why, if possible, you should convert your document to a PDF and notate it there. Sometimes I will find students who found an article on the internet. In other words, it's coded in HTML, the sort of thing that you look through in, in a browser that you're used to seeing all the time. And uh, there are some HTML highlighters. They do exist. I'd say it's nowhere near as effective as like having that document saved to a hard drive or saved to the cloud. You know it's there. You know it's consistent. It's a PDF that you own. And uh, any HTML page can be pretty easily converted to PDF to a PDF file. It's, it's not a hard thing to do. Just Google, you know, print to PDF programs and there's dozens of them. Uh, so in any case, um, we want to highlight the stuff that we're reading as, as we're going through the article. And uh, any PDF viewer will allow for highlighting. Most will allow for note taking. So while I have said in this video, you should get the full Adobe version, you don't need it. Uh, you just do the, the free version of Adobe or, you know, what is it? Foxit is another PDF viewer I've used. It could do the same thing. As you are reading something for academic purposes, you're going to want to keep track of what it says, particularly if you're thinking of using it in a research paper. This is a peer review article that I do have some of my students read. It's about social media algorithms and incentives and what social media companies like want to do with their users and what all social media companies want to do with their users so to keep them engaged and to keep them clicking and sharing. And it turns out that the thing that uh, allows for that most effectively is negative emotion. And we like to be mad, it seems. And uh, social media companies are often, you know, exploiting that uh, psychological weakness that we have for being angry. In any case, that's what the article is about. Uh, let's get into the um, highlighting part of it. So. As you can see on this PDF, I've highlighted some things, some things I have added notes to. Usually the notes will be a very brief version of what it says at that point in the article. If there's something that it seems to me is like really important that I want to keep track of, I might want to return to it, then I will quickly highlight the thing and take a note on what it says. Let's kind of practice this right now. I'll get down here. I haven't made any notes right here, so let's see what it says. This is where the researchers are laying out their objectives. 
Specifically, we are interested in how political in-group and out-group language compared uh, to other established predictors of social media engagement. I don't want to get too sidetracked, so let's just leave, like, leave it right there. So I will select that. I will click on the highlight text. It did it in a different color, but that's okay. Uh, and then I'm going to click on this little comment box right here. So if I click on that, now I can make a comment that is on this PDF. Uh, I've had students who have kind of struggled with this. It's an assignment to do this thing. We'll talk about some, some mistakes that students have made in doing this, but all I'm asking for you to do is that as you read a document, and you see something that seems important and worth keeping track of, highlight it and then take the briefest of brief notes on what it says. So let's see, uh, they compared how out group language um, attracted, oops, didn't type, attracted attention um, on social media. Let's just leave it at that. Now I can uh, get rid of this thing by closing the little box right here. Uh, and it is still there if I want to see it. I can hold my cursor over the note and remember what it says in that part of the article. I also want to point out that there's a little comment box on the right right here. And sometimes, especially if I've read something that's long and complicated, I will remember that there's this kernel of an idea that I want from that thing, but I, I, I don't know where it is in the, the long article. This little note taking function on the side or little note tracking function on the side can help you find the stuff that you found interesting. So it has a list of all the notes that I've made in this document and I can kind of go down through and say, oh, there's the point where I want to find that like little bit of information or that little quote or, or whatever it happened to be. Um, doing this is helpful, obviously, because it will help you like navigate the document uh, more easily. I'm also going to say that it, it enhances reading comprehension, taking notes, that is. Uh, if you're taking these sort of notes regularly, it's a way of sort of forcing your brain into understanding what the document is saying. We've all had that experience where we're reading something and our mind is elsewhere and we're not really paying attention to what we're reading. It's a, you know weird that we can do that, but I definitely have done it. I've read things out loud and not even really understood what it, what it meant later. Um, highlighting stuff continuously, uh, is a way of sort of short circuiting that problem, or, or I don't know, short circuit is the way to say it. It's a way of solving that problem. It allows you to uh, stay more engaged with, with the text that you're reading. And it's also something you should just do in general, it, particularly, again, if you're writing a research paper of some sort, uh, you're going to want to keep track of where the information is within the articles, and highlighting as you go is enormously helpful. So I strongly encourage you to do it.